Hello, uh, my name is Ramesh Thomas. I work in the Open Source Technology Center at Intel. Uh, uh, I'm part of a team that uh, uh, contributes to real-time Linux. Uh, by real-time Linux, I mean the distribution with the preempt RT patch, uh, which you may, some of you may be aware of. Uh, so we uh, generally look for optimizations in the kernel and tools that can help real-time applications. One uh, particular area we look at is uh, how can we use hardware, certain hardware features, take advantage of them, uh, which generally gets turned off in most uh, real-time environments. Uh, one such uh, hardware feature is the C states, the CPU idle power management. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking about that and how we can include power management, CPU idle power management uh, in part of the uh, your ap real time application design. Uh, th uh, all that I'm going to talk about is uh, documented in detail in this uh, Linux Foundation, this uh, wiki in the Linux Foundation. Uh, these slides are also going to, I'm going to upload it after this presentation, so you, have, you will have them. So I've been looking at uh, what goes on behind, you know, when the, why are these deep sea states? Why do they impact uh, the, uh, the, uh, the latencies? Uh, and also I've been looking at what goes on, what options are available in the kernel that we can use to mitigate them so that instead of uh, disabling them, we, should, we will be able to tune them to our needs. And so this is what the, these are the methods that we are going to talk about. Uh, there are several uh, reasons for uh, power saving, several advantages of power saving. Uh, one thing we should know is we should uh, try to avoid the all or nothing uh, approach. You know, uh, there are several flavors of C states available uh, with different uh, levels of latency impacts. So we should be able to dynamically choose the ones that uh, we can use at, uh, you know, and disable some of them that may be uh, problematic. Similarly, uh, in a system, we may be using, uh, there are several cores, and then all the cores may not be running real-time applications. Some of them may be running something like graphics or something which is not real-time, and then, but we don't want to disable C states system-wide. So we should be able to also control it individually in each course. And uh, also we should avoid static configurations at boot time. You know, we should be able to dynamically change these configurations over the uh, lifetime of the application as conditions change. So one thing I've seen, I've worked in the Zephyr power management also, and one thing I realized is any power management solution, especially in these embedded areas, uh, it will be effective if you tailor it to a specific need. Uh, in this case, in real-time application case, I, determinism is the main goal of it. So we'll uh, have to, uh, the solutions are designed based on solving uh, the, the problem of determinism. So let us talk a little bit more about what is determinism. So this are, uh, these graphs are, uh, are, are histo generated from histograms, from a, generated from a tool called cyclic test, which we'll talk about. So here in the left-hand side, it, the, the x-axis is the latency, and the y-axis is the number of samples. So you see in the left-hand side, there is some latency, but it is fixed, it is consistent. So that is, that is what is, it is deterministic. So in the real-time application, we can design, we can budget time and try to absorb that, compensate for that. But in the right-hand side, this is not good because it is, the latency is jumping all over the place. It becomes very difficult to uh, come up with any solutions. So just note that uh, this, uh, the right-hand side graph has deep sea states in play. The left-hand side has been tuned to block deep sea states. So let us see, so there's variations, uh, is, uh, we call it jitter. So let us see where does this jitter come from. So as we know that the deeper sea state, it saves more power. And also it, uh, because, uh, it has to do a lot of more things while entering and existing, it has to turn on and off a lot of things. Uh, the shallower ones also save power, but they retain most of the states. The C3Cs, 
the cache and TLB gets flushed. Now the thing is, it's not just the, uh, the deeper states doing more things, that is the problem. It is, uh, the problem is in what it does. So it, uh, it disables now the, the cache and TLBs get flushed. Now application, when it is accessing, uh, executing code or accessing memory, if that is in the cache, it will be executing much faster compared to if it is uh, exiting, just exiting from a CPU idle state when the caches are all uh, lost, it is going to access memory directly and it, the cache has to be repopulated. And this is going to vary a lot. And this is where the jitter and the, ma the main uh, latency variations get start to come from. And the other things like when you are turning back uh, things that are got turned off, the kernel may need to do synchronization, may have to disable interrupts, and uh, the PLLs may, get relock may need relocking. All these things introduce jitter. So now, uh, the thing is, if all these things happened in a consistent manner, it's OK. If it is, even if it is a uh, uh, larger uh, latency, it is fine. But it is actually uh, jumping around. That is the problem. That's what we are going to solve. So let us uh, try to, uh, talk about this uh, charge, because we are going to rely on these graphs a lot. So this is generated by a tool called Cyclic Test, I said. And it is, uh, it is run over a long period of time so to get a reliable uh, latency of, uh, uh, in a particular platform and kernel configuration. So that is important. So uh, in a particular and platform and kernel configuration, there will be a certain latency behavior. And so we run it for a long time to get a reliable uh, data. So in the left-hand side, we, have, we get uh, the, uh, a certain uh, uh, latency behavior. Which is uh, we can be, uh, which we can then uh, in the real time application will budget some time to compensate for that. So now on the right hand side, when this also we is the worst case condition. That is, we run it for a long period for 24 hours or more to get this worst case, so that you know the worst case we'll be using it in later uh, tuning things. So we should be aware of what is the worst case. So when we reach a critical phase, we know what to watch out for, how much time we need to you know, keep a, give a buffer or you know, to watch out, careful about. So, so, that we, uh, so that means when we reach that uh, critical phases, we don't want this to happen. So how, and why is this happening? Because deep sea states are uh, in play here. And so one obvious thing that comes to mind is to block the sea states, deep sea states at critical phases. So, so that means we need to have a way to dynamically control the C states, right? So let, that's what we'll see. How will we control the C state selection? So to control anything uh, uh, in software, we need, look for, we need some attributes. So we need some things that we can use to, based on that, we can set some conditions and filtering. So C states has two such attributes. One is exit latency. And the other is uh, target residency. Uh, the exit latency is the time when the C state, when the, the time taken for the hardware to exit that C state. Target residency, any C state, it takes some power just to enter and exit because it has to do some things when it uh, enters and when it exits. So that to, it consumes some power. Two, now if you want to, uh, uh, now you need to stay idle for a certain amount of time to compensate for the power that was spent just entering an exit. That uh, amount of time is called target residency. So the, uh, uh, so the kernel policy, which is called uh, CPU idle governor, uses these two attributes to select the correct C state, the appropriate C state, in a, given, uh, at a, in a given idle time. So now, how do we filter out with these things? So one thing we know see is, the deeper the C state, the exit latency is higher. And similarly, the deeper the C states, it has to do more things. So it will take, consume more power, and the target residency is also more power. It has to stay uh, idle for a longer period to justify just entering that C state. So now we can, uh, we can start you know, looking, thinking of uh, what if I give some kind of a constraint saying that to the, to the governor, to the policy, saying 
remove all this, uh, don't select C states above a certain exit latency. So these are the, uh, or above a certain target residency. So based on these attributes, we can think of now two methods to do this. These two are independent methods, even though the governor will use both of them, but when, for our purpose, we'll be, we can use this uh, independently. So we can come up with uh, two methods saying, uh, I, we, we, we have to look at a way to how to ex uh, specify a constraint saying uh, to block exit latencies and target residencies. So we'll talk about that. So, and uh, let us start with first looking at exit latency. So this, this graph and, this, uh, and the next slides, that uh, the, the scales are just for illustration, and they are exaggerated. So just to show that deeper the C state, the exit latencies are higher. Now, in our example, uh, we may have the shaded region is a constraint that we'll see how to specify. But we say we, say, uh, we specify a constraint of exit latencies to uh, that we will tolerate only that excuse constraint. So if we can specify that, what happens is the governor will then see this constraint, any C, uh, C state that is higher than that will be rejected. So in uh, this example, C6 was rejected. And C6 in this example was the one that was causing the you know, the, the huge jitter. You saw the, the, the graph where the, it was going, or the latency was going all over the place. So C6 was the one that was causing the problem. So we, uh, when we uh, remove it, it goes away. So uh, how, now one thing to note is when we are doing this thing, we calibration, trying to find the proper exit latency that will constrain, that will block it, we don't need to actually know the specifics of the C states. We only need to be able to calibrate, try out a calibration process we try out a latency that will give good results. So once we get a latency a constraint that gives good results, we'll call it, uh, we'll refer to it as a safe latency constraint. Now the next method is target uh, filtering using the target residencies. So the deeper the C state, it has a larger uh, target residency. So the governor, the way it selects C states using filters using the target residency is, when the C CPU goes idle, it, uh, it get, the governor gets called. And the governor, what it sees, it first checks how much time do I have to idle. Uh, it has several algorithms to, uh, it has like, uh, algorithms to uh, determine that. So one of the things that is, this is the next event. It knows what is the next event. So what, the, what is the next event could be, uh, uh, if there was a timer tick scheduled, it could be that one. But if you uh, use a dynamic or adaptive ticks, that is don't use the periodic ticks, the next event will be the next event that is going to uh, happen. So the idle interval, it could be the, the time that your application is sleeping and will be waking up, scheduled to wake up. So now, for example, now the, the C6, for example, it has a target residency of 200 mic microseconds. Now the governor sees that the next uh, idle interval is less than 200, say 199 microseconds. So this will not fit into the idle interval. So it will find the next deepest C state that will fit into it. So that means we should, if we could control this idle interval time, we should be able to filter out C6. So how do we do that? In our application, when we sleep, we don't sleep for uh, more, more than, say in this example, 199 microseconds at one time. If we want to wait longer periods, we break it into chunks of 199 microseconds. So let us uh, name these two methods based on this uh, that we use against the attributes. Safe latency constraint to filter using the exit latencies attribute and uh, managing the maximum idle time your application sleeps to uh, control using the target residency. Now let us see how, how this happens, uh, quickly look at how what happens goes on in the kernel. So um, when the kernel goes idle, when there is nothing to do, it uh, goes into the kernel idle. So if C states were uh, disabled, uh, there was no C states enabled, it will just wait in a tight idle loop. Uh, that's a total waste. If C states were enabled, it will call a CPU idle driver. 
for example, Intel Idle is the driver for Intel CPUs. If there were no driver, it would call uh, ACPI CPU Idle driver. Now that will call, uh, call the governor to uh, check the policies and pick uh, appropriate uh, C state. Uh, and after that, it will pass that, uh, the CPL driver will pass it to the hardware. And there are other logics in the hardware called the power control unit, which, will, uh, which can demote it even further. But demoting, lowering is not a problem because lower the C state, it is safer, right? So we don't have to be concerned about that. So we'll talk, we'll need to only focus on the, the governor. And all our solutions will be interfacing with this governor. So the governor uses exit latency and target residency to filter out C states. And it compares it with uh, the idle interval that it has. It compares target residency with idle interval and exit latency with the constraint. Now we have uh, been talking about giving it a constraint, giving the constraint, but let, uh, we don't know how to give the constraint. So now in the next slide, we'll see how we can specify the constraint. So we'll uh, specify the CPU, the exit latency constraint using uh, infrastructure framework called power management quality of service. So th this is a very, uh, very easy, very simple interface. All that you have to give is a number, and which is a microseconds. And uh, this, uh, the, power, the, the PMQO is a framework, interfaces with the governor here, and uh, it, it provides it the, with the, in, uh, the constraint that was given to it. And the governor uses the constraint to compare it with exit latency. So it's, uh, we'll talk about in more detail. Uh, let's see the advantages of using this method. So, uh, so the applications, so this option gives the application an option to change the constraints dynamically at different phases. You can uh, enable it. Uh, you can enable all C states. You can disable completely all C states. Or you can fine tune it. And also, this gives an option to control it per core. So you can turn off uh, C states in some cores while keeping it on, on other cores. So it gives, it gives a lot of flexibility. And this is the interface. It's pretty simple. It is, uh, the, use, the, the PMQ is as system-wide. You can turn on or off for, uh, C states for the, all the CPUs in the system or per core. So the, what we are I'm showing here is per core. Uh, it, uh, and it also has a driver interface and a user space interface. So this one is the user space interface so using uh, the SysFS interface. Uh, every, each CPU has the PMQS resume latency uh, uh, microsecond uh, attribute. You just write the, uh, the uh, constraint to it, and that will be used. And there is an option called uh, writing, uh, disabling it, all C states completely, writing a n slash a or enabling removing all restrictions, writing a zero. Uh, this is a new uh, change that was added, I think, uh, end of last year. So this is there in 4.16. And RT Linux is currently 4.14. So these changes are not there. So these are the three patches you may need to pull in if you are using uh, the RT Linux distribution. And also, one more thing I want to note on is that uh, the system-wide interface and the user space interface and the, and the per core interface are, are a little bit different. So you can refer to the, the, the wiki page that I pointed at, at as uh, details as well as uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the reference also has that. And uh, another thing is this document. This I don't see it in the documentation yet. So it is missing in the PMQS documentation. So you may need to refer to this or and file a bug to for the documentation. There. So let's recap. So the, so we covered the main concepts. So let us recap. So we know that uh, during critical phases, so we know that C, deep C states cause some latency, uh, high latency jitter, and uh, during critical phases, we want to filter them out. So how do we filter them out? We, we filter them out using some of the uh, attributes of C states. And how do, uh, using a set of corresponding uh, user controls. And those are the controls is uh, for exit latency, we are able to give a latency constraint. And filtering out using target residency is to limit the idle interval or application sleeps at one time. So with this information, well, let us look at an example uh, uh, tuning. So for tuning, we'll first uh, have to calibrate what is, uh, what is the, some, some values. We'll need to find out some values. So uh, 
So, uh, so this is the uh, so, uh, so first we find out what is the worst case. We talked about what is the worst case. Uh, uh, we, uh, and then we find out how we can achieve a good results. Uh, that is something that is some uh, latency behavior, which is consistent. So we have two methods to do this. One is using the, uh, say, uh, the latency constraint, and other is in the idle interval. Idle interval. We will we'll go into this, uh, uh, these steps in detail now. So uh, we talked about cyclic text. So this is, we use the cyclic test to uh, find the, uh, generate the histogram. Uh, so the cyclic test, uh, we, uh, this is the histogram option. And uh, the, the wiki page gives more details. And the, the, the parameter that we are more interested in is the interval. This is the, the, the iPhone I, and the argument is in micro, microseconds. So the way cyclic test works is it you, this sleeps for this interval in a loop. It keeps sleeping for this interval, for a, and then it wakes up. Then it checks the time. Then it sees what is the difference between the amount of time I was expecting to sleep and the amount of time I, you know, the actual time I woke up. So the difference is the jitter, is the latency. So uh, so that uh, th this is run for the number, uh, number of uh, samples, you can run it uh, for, uh, if you give a, uh, the, this uh, time duration, it'll run for the time duration, keep running, running in the loop. So the longer we run it, the more reliable the data. So when we are running it, this for the, getting the worst case scenario, we remove all restrictions. When PMQs, we write uh, the n slash a, which means no restriction, and uh, cyclic test will, keep a high uh, interval to, so that all the C states will, can get in. So the first one is uh, uh, the, how to kind of find a latency constraint that will uh, block the deep C state states. So, we'll, uh, so inside the, so we'll, uh, in for this, we'll, the, cycle, the interval will keep it high so that that won't do any blocking. Then in the PM cost constraint, we'll calibrate, we'll try different uh, latency constraints until we get a good uh, result. Similarly, uh, when we want to find the good idle interval, we'll, uh, rem we'll remove all restrictions in the PM cost and try different intervals until we get a good results. Uh, good results is basically uh, the, the, the bottom graph. So in this example, this is only for an example, uh, so the worst case, say we found the maximum is 400 microseconds. So in a platform and kernel configurations, if you run it for a longer period, this is a reliable number. And to get the, uh, the good results, uh, we are able, uh, so to using the latency constraint method, we found that 30 microsecond constraint is, can filter out the uh, uh, problematic C states. And, uh, and, uh, 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 and an idle interval of giving 100 microseconds also gives us similar results. Uh, so let, so let, with this information, so let us look at an example uh, tuning. So, so in this, uh, uh, we are having a deadline at 1,000 microseconds. So now we have time to idle at 1,000 micro, for 1,000 microseconds. But end, at the end of 1,000 microseconds, we need to be ready to, uh, we, the, the response should be reliable. We should be, uh, uh, we, we, we should be right on the 1,000 microseconds. The response should be there at that point. So how do we ensure that? So, so we have to wake up a little earlier to before that, uh, before the thousand microns, because we, uh, if we, we wait here with all restrictions remote, the deeper C states will also get in. And as we know, when the deeper C states come, then we'll be having this kind of jitter. So now we know that 400 microseconds is the maximum uh, worst case latency. So we can use that knowledge to uh, wake up that much time before that uh, that uh, that uh, problem uh, problem uh, problematic uh, time, and then we can do some things that can uh, uh, you know control that from happening. So so what we do is we have to wake up a little bit earlier than the worst case because we may have to uh, after we wake up we'll have to do some operations. We have to uh, prime the cache. So access the code or and data and data to so that they get pre-populated into the cache before it reaches this uh, the, the, the deadline. And another thing to notice: so now this we may want be 
waking up at 400 microns, but it may not be actually waking up there. It may wake up anywhere around there because you know this is this is uh, this is not fixed. It can it, it could wake up any uh, any time within that time, right? So so what we need to be aware of. So when you come up, we need to look at how much time we have remaining for the, the to reach the deadline, and then the remaining time we should wait. Make sure that the deep sea states don't enter. So now we don't want to take any more any more chances. So. Then now we know that the safe. Uh, the first example is using the idle interval method. So this will then we start waiting in uh, the idle and under microseconds chunks. So see, deep sea states will not enter, and we are uh, we are sure to meet the deadline uh, accurately. And another option is to uh, uh, is to use the PMQS method. So that is maybe a little easier in certain use cases, and that is we just uh, set uh, as soon as we wake up, we set the uh, latency constraint to the safe latency constraint that we found uh, here in this case 30 microseconds and the other option is to just write n slash a to block all c states so that is another option so once that is done and then the cache is also uh, all in place so when we reach the deadline we'll uh, we are safe so this uh, pretty much I mean, covers the all the uh, the uh, uh, my findings in the CPU idle power management use in real-time workloads. So there are some uh, additional strategies that would help uh, in, uh, gen in general CPU idle uh, use of CPU idle. What is this? Uh, uh, the entering C states uh, depends on the topology of the, C the how the uh, CPUs are organized, grouped together. Uh, if two logical uh, uh, CPUs are in a core, uh, the core will enter at the, uh, as a particular C state only when everything in the all the logical CPUs in that enter the C state. So, if you group uh, the the your say, uh, your task in the idling tasks, the tasks that can have opportunities to idle in uh, uh, in the in the groups, you have a better chance of getting uh, achieving more power savings. And other one I mentioned is the the priming the cache. So that is important. You need to may have to develop algorithms to be able to. Uh, it is a standard real-time uh, application development procedure. So uh, you have to uh, make sure that uh, things are consistent when we reach the deadline. So we prime the cache before we uh, reach there. And another thing is this uh, kernel configuration, the boot parameters, and there are certain. Uh, the kernel has to be built in certain with certain configurations. These are uh, documented in detail in the wiki page. One thing is, if interest is the uh, the no hertz, the the, the scheduling clock ticks. So is uh, you can save more power by disabling the periodic ticks. You don't want to every period you want the ticks to be coming, so you want to disable it. So, uh, but uh, uh, some some of the uh, options are known to create some problems in, uh, with CPU idle. So you can, that is the documented here, but the no-hurts full is undergoing more uh, work in the Linux kernel. They are constantly, there has been improvements made for real-time, uh, for the real-time uh, use case. So the key takeaways is this methods, the primary goal is uh, to make sure that we don't uh, uh, compromise any of these real-time constraints requirements. So it's the thing is the approach is it's okay to completely disable C states. You know, you don't want to save, but we have to meet the real time constraint. Otherwise, there's no use of uh, uh, the uh, the real time application. Uh, so and then we uh, it provides you know the options to enable or disable dynamically. That is uh, and also multiple options to do it. So there is a flexibility, and also you can do it in degree instead of uh, disabling it uh, at a boot time. You have options to dynamically do it. And then the tools and infrastructures, you know, it is all what we talked about is in the Linux kernel, ready to, it's available. Uh, you can improve it if you, if you need to. And, uh, the, and the scalability is option we, uh, is, uh, is an another advantage. You don't need to be knowing about specifics of the C states on a platform or architecture. Otherwise, that design becomes not scalable, you know. So, so that's why uh, you, uh, and also it makes it uh, easier to give, provide a solution for, uh, Platform and kernel configuration. So there are references. Uh, there are good references, and I'm also the, have this uh, uh, this uh, wiki page also has a uh, uh, lot of details. You can give feedback or you know improvements in that. Uh, and thank you. Uh, any any questions?
Uh, it is at the colonel. We interface with the colonel, especially the colonel's, the colonel's policy manager here, which is called the governor, the way it uh, So the PMKOS is, a, is, a, is, a, is the operating system in the kernel interface. The, uh, we don't change anything in the hardware behavior. We don't do anything. We don't change the hardware behavior. So we, we, we just interface with the policy manager. So the yeah the user the, that, that's one, one common interface there. So the PMQs the one interface. Uh, yeah, the, so you see there are two different interfaces. One is a system wide and one is a per core, and they both are inconsistent. So uh, when you look at the document, you'll be confused, uh, saying one says uh, different than the other. So uh, the 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 uh, in the system wide interface, it is just you open a file and you write to that. Uh, that uh, that's a surface interface, and then close it, it goes away. In the user space, you write, and any write, uh, application writes to it, it stays persists. So uh, when you provide a solution, you need to be aware of uh, what is going on in that, uh, all the applications. It is not, uh, it is just one common place where that uh, goes. Uh, any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.